listen, do not follow my example and sit on the floor. This holds true for any decluttering category, not just papers. I am only down here so that you can see what I'm doing, but normally I would take these and go sit somewhere comfortable. You do the same. <laughs> Let's go. Hi guys, it's Laura and the very first step that I would recommend when it comes to paper clutter, actually I recommend this for every decluttering category, but usually as kind of the finishing touch at the end, but I always recommend it first for paper clutter and that is to stem the flow. What I mean by that is to actually stop as many papers from coming into your home as possible. The reason I recommend it first for papers is that generally going through paperwork takes a long time and by the time you get to the end of it, so much more has come into your home. So cut as much of it as you can off at the source. This might mean getting yourself off junk mail lists and I will have some resources for you in the description box. It might mean switching to e-statements. It might mean calling that company who keeps sending you a catalog and asking them to stop but doing whatever you can to stem the flow of paperwork that is crossing the threshold into your home. Stemming the flow is what has helped me to minimize the amount of papers coming into my home so that they all fit nice and neatly in this little filing cabinet here, but it really does make a big difference. So I will show you my setup, but today I want to go through it, whittle it down even further if I can and share all my tips with you, share my setup and how I actually deal with and process papers on a regular basis. Also, listen, if you hear noise, I've got guys outside working in the garden. I've got my daughter upstairs. I've got a puppy upstairs who is just in full on puppy energy mode. So uh, just, we're all just gonna have to deal with that. <laughs> The first category that I'm going through here is kind of ID or certs. So I have all of our visa documentation, our passports, social security cards, um, birth certs, marriage certs, all that type of stuff in here. And I will go through the categories that I have a little bit later in the video. But for now, I just want to say that if you have a lot of paperwork, what I would suggest is just taking one inch chunks or like 20 sheets of paper at a time really break it down small because that is what is going to make it feel like you are actually progressing it's not going to seem so insurmountable it will just make the process that much easier so essentially then as you're going through you want to create four piles one is for stuff that can be recycled one is for stuff that can be shredded. Remember here that you really only have to shred the kind of personal information. So if you've got a letter, you really may only need to tear off the top of it with your address on it or some form of account number or something. That particular tip is going to stop you from having to empty your shredder every five seconds. Your third pile then is going to be for stuff that can be filed and the fourth is for stuff that needs some form of action like an invitation that you need to reply to, a form that you need to fill out, etc. Now, Marie Kondo's general rule of thumb when it comes to papers in her KonMarie method, which is what I generally follow when I'm decluttering, is to regard every single piece of paper as trash or recyclable you're only going to keep it if you have a very very good reason going in with that mindset you know that you're definitely going to get rid of everything unless there is a very compelling reason to keep it that's what's going to get you big results so unless that piece of paper can justify its place in your home out it goes okay it's only the first file and i already got rid of way more than i thought i would this is all of our immigration stuff so while we are applying for visas green cards all that sort of stuff all the paperwork and i realize now that we have our green cards we probably do not need to keep all of this they're just kind of um bills from the lawyer <laughs> but just notices to say that they have received our request or whatever um yeah i'm gonna double check these with my husband but i really don't think that we need them a lot of them are just kind of receipts so yeah that's already a big chunk gone the second category then that I dealt with was health. So anything related to health, bills, insurance, statements, etc. And that just reminds me that another great tip when it comes to keeping paper clutter at bay is to deal with stuff as soon as it comes in. So if you get a bill, 
pay it immediately if you can if you get junk mail recycle it um, or contact the company even better and ask them to stop sending it if you get an invitation reply as quickly as you can obviously there are some things where you won't be able to do that you just won't have the time or whatever but make sure that you are putting it somewhere that you can deal with it as soon as you have the time maybe that is on your desk wherever you can deal with that but if you can do something about the piece of paper when it first comes into your hand now another thing here this is something that i really struggle with when it comes to healthcare here in the us because i'm just not used to it if you are not sure what to do with something find out for me uh, all of these healthcare bills and stuff I, i'm just not sure whether or not I need to keep them, or if I do, how long I need to keep them for. So that is something that has now gone on my to-do list. I want to know what to do with it. And again, that is a great tip for you because very often the reason the clutter piles up is because it is essentially a delayed decision. We don't know what to do with something. We don't know where to put something. So we just put it down and we think I'll deal with that later. But if you're not sure what to do with a piece of paper or really anything in your life, make it your mission to go and find out. Or if you're not sure where to put something, make it your mission to find it a home. That is how you are going to stay on top of clutter. Okay, that actually took a while. What I did was I separated everything out into years. So now I don't have to go flicking through everything like 2018 is all on one stack, etc. Um, I did actually get rid of another stack of papers. There. There's about 20 or 30 sheets of paper that I no longer have to deal with. <laughs> the next file folder then is insurance. And you can see like there isn't that much in there. So I think what I'm going to do is because it mostly relates to either health or property and I have folders dedicated to health and to property I'm actually going to take the stuff out of this and just put it in whatever folder it goes in and thus I will save myself this additional folder as you're going through the process ask yourself if that information could be accessed in some other way so for example statements could you access those online does somebody else maybe have a copy of something and um, when it comes to user manuals you know that's generally information that you can access online or in some digital format so that will help to reduce a lot of the bulk of your papers and um, when it comes to user manuals in particular give consideration to ripping out the foreign parts that will generally make up about 90% of every user manual. So you will considerably reduce the bulk there if you just take out those sections. For what is left then, I would say to broadly categorize them. There is no point in you know subdividing and having everything in this really complicated system because how often are you really going to access that information? Probably not that often at all, maybe once or twice a year. You just need to know where it is if you ever do need to put your hands on something. So let me give you an idea of the categories that I had. Now, these are the ones I had at the beginning, but as you will know, and as you will see, even as we go on, I did get rid of some folders. The first was certs, so that's where I keep all the ID stuff. Then after that was health, anything related to healthcare. I did have the insurance folder, obviously that's gone now. After that was property, so anything related to property, um, insurance, valuations, surveys, all that type of thing. Then reference. So this was this is just a folder where I put anything that I think that I may want to reference. The stuff in there does not deserve kind of a category all on its own. It's just too small. So I just put everything in there and it's perfectly fine to have a miscellaneous category. Not everything has to have its own specific category. After that then is rentals. Uh, Sam and I have two rental properties in Ireland. I like to keep that stuff separate from our own property, um, just lease agreements, things like that. After that is a, a folder for my daughter Scout where I put anything kind of related to her. And then I had, but you will see later on in the video that I actually got rid of this folder, I had a someday folder. This was where I put stuff that I kind of wanted to access someday, um, you know, ideas for things. But I realized that I could easily put that stuff into the reference folder, you know, things that I might want to reference at some point in the future. So started with eight categories, finished with six. 
Let me jump in here with another tip for you. If you have a lot of paperwork to go through, then I would recommend shredding and recycling as you go. So after you finish each one inch pile or whatever way you're doing it, get rid of it. Otherwise, what you're doing is basically going from one big pile and just separating it out into four different piles. You're not going to get that same sense of progress. You're not going to see a visible difference and that may make you feel demotivated by actually shredding it, actually recycling it, getting it out of your sight. That is what is going to spur you on and keep you moving. This is when I tackled my daughter's stuff. So I want to talk very briefly about schoolwork, school papers, because I know that that is a huge problem for a lot of parents. What I do is, when the stuff comes home, I will go through it, ooh and ah at all the artwork and stuff, um, go through it all with my daughter, make sure that she knows that I have seen it, that I appreciate it. If there is information in there, I will save it somewhere else, you know, put it into my calendar or whatever. And then I will save it in the kitchen. It stays in a pile in the kitchen until the weekend. At the weekend, when my daughter is distracted with, you know, playing outside or watching TV or whatever, all of that stuff will silently and secretly be slipped into the recycling. And it means that every week then I can start fresh. For the occasional pieces of paper that I do want to keep, and I will say that I'm not very sentimental when it comes to papers and artwork and stuff, for the things that I do keep though, I put those into her folder. And then at the end of the school year, I go back through it because sometimes things that seemed very special, you know, at the beginning of the school year, after the year is over and you realize you have, you know, 10 of what are essentially the same picture or, you know, whatever, they may not necessarily be as special to you anymore so at the end of the school year go back through it and you can probably whittle it down even further i do want to say though that if you are the sentimental type and if that stuff does mean a lot to you then go with that don't you know fight that natural instinct if those pieces of paper are important to you and they are special to you then do keep them you don't have to get rid of anything get an archive box or some sort of basket or tub or something and just put all of the papers in there just have one central place that you can put it and like I said at the end of the school year do go back through it you may find that there are things in there that just don't mean as much to you anymore but don't fight your natural instinct if your natural instinct is to keep things just have a really good system in place like I said you know keep the stuff out for a week and then either recycle it or put it away in a memory box or an archive box or something like that and then at the end of the school year, just go back through it and whittle it down as much as you can. The next folder I tackled then was my someday folder. And you already know that I condensed this with my reference folder. But like I said, it is totally fine to have a miscellaneous folder if there are some sheets of paper that really do not deserve a folder all of their own. They're things that you know that you're not going to need to access on a regular basis. You just do want to keep them. Stick them in a miscellaneous folder, a reference folder, a someday folder, whatever you want to call it. But at this stage, I want to talk about, you know, how often you should go through your papers or how you're going to kind of remember to stay on top of them. What I would do is to use some kind of time of year as your cue to go back through and whittle things down. For example, when you get in your new insurance documents every year, use that as your reminder to go through your other documents and get rid of as much as you can, you know, get rid of the old stuff, etc. Or you could use tax season. So every year when you're doing your taxes, that is your reminder to go through and clear out all of your paperwork. So just tie it to some annual or semi-annual event so that when that time rolls around, you will know, oh, it's time to go back through my papers. But look, I know, that's great, you know, going through them on a yearly basis, but you will still have to deal with papers on a much more regular basis. So let's talk about that next. Okay, let's talk briefly about maintenance because you can stem the flow as much as you can, you know, stop all that junk coming in. You can declutter, get rid of as much as you can. But the reality is you're still going to have stuff coming in that you will want or need. So let's talk about how to deal with that so that it doesn't become... Uh, 
<laughs> doesn't get completely out of hand again. Like I said at the outset, try and deal with stuff as soon as it comes in. Just get rid of as much as you can, but get yourself some form of in box. I know the temptation is, you know, you go and grab the post and then it just ends up on a kitchen counter or something. It ends up in a pile essentially somewhere. That's fine if you're then, you know, going through the stuff on a regular basis, but have a nice basket or tray or put it in a drawer. That's what I do. I use the top drawer in my filing cabinet unit. I just pop papers in there, receipts, cards, anything like that, forms that I need to fill out, things that I need to reply to, they all go in one place. And then every Sunday, as part of my weekly reset, I go through my inbox and I action as much as I can. Have it all contained, ready to go, so that you can take that basket or that box or just open that drawer or whatever. But if you just leave it in piles, it's going to start falling over, it's going to start getting mixed up with other things. Have a designated spot. All you have to do then is set a standing appointment with yourself to clear it out. Like I said, I do it every Sunday. Action what needs to be actioned, file what needs to be filed. And you do not need to have a little filing cabinet like I have. You can just get yourself an archive box, you know, a banker's box. You can use pretty much anything. I use plastic folders for all my tax documents. Actually, here, I'll show you. Let me just go grab them. These types of things. <laughs> I use these, just pop all of my tax stuff in, receipts, printouts, statements, stuff like that. If you don't have that many papers, these are also a great option. You can just pop them in a drawer, cupboard, wherever you keep your papers. I have loads more videos on decluttering as well as more on paper clutter specifically, so I will link those for you. But let me know, what is your number one burning question when it comes to paper clutter? Drop it in the comments and I will reply to as many as I can. Until next time, Karev Mila Mahagoyev, Agus Vekki Meishiv Shikalua. Slán!